Hi, folks. Uh, welcome to the webinar. Thank you for uh, joining me today. My name is uh, David Steele from Arcturus. Uh, in this webinar today, we're going to talk about SIP Extreme, which is a product line of software and hardware from Arcturus that's specifically designed for hardened voice and video communication systems. Um, before we begin, a couple of quick housekeeping items. Uh, number one is this webinar is being recorded. We will send out the link uh, just in case you miss anything. Also, if you do have any questions, please feel free to use the chat feature to send them along and we'll get to them during the Q&A portion. Just to give you a quick uh, overview of the agenda today, I'll start by uh, giving you an introduction to the SIP Extreme product line, then uh, discuss developing edge communication devices and specifically some of the uh, unique design considerations. Then we can have a look at some of the use cases and applications, uh, hardware platforms. We'll do a bit of a deep dive into the UCLS 1012A VOIP board and module, which is the newest member of our hardware family. We'll look at uh, software services and features within SIP Extreme and also integration and management. So we'll end off with uh, some additional resources and our Q&A. So uh, why don't we uh, get started? So what, what is SIP Extreme? Well, SIP Extreme is a product line of software and hardware for mission critical communications devices. It provides enablement for a range of voice and video services from simple IP audio streaming to complex SIP, VoIP, video, and web RTC. It offers hardware support that scales from single channel microcontroller devices that run an RTOS to full featured multi-service, multi-channel 64-bit Linux systems. Now to address the needs of mission critical devices, SIP Extreme software has features built into it to support redundancy, improve signaling resilience, and provide self-testing monitoring functions. On the audio processing side of things, it provides wideband audio encoding with audio intelligibility enhancements, including noise reduction and acoustic echo cancellation, which are really critical for many public safety applications, including intercoms. Finally, uh, SIP Extreme security, supports security extensions for signaling, as well as secure methods to integrate into an overall system architecture by using our Embark Secure IoT product, which supports full management and configuration telemetry and secure OTA over the air uh, firmware updates. So, where is SIP Extreme found? Well, SIP Extreme is quite uh, full featured and mature. Uh, we've seen many applications uh, come through the door uh, over the years. Uh, typically at Arcturus, we focus on three vertical markets though. We focus on uh, smart buildings and cities, uh, smart healthcare systems and intelligent transportation systems. And SIP Extreme really aligns with this market orientation by providing solutions uh, that range from intercoms, PA, safety, security and access control systems for buildings, uh, elder care, patient care, uh, devices such as wearables, uh, transportation communications for passengers and drivers, radio systems, group uh, PTT push to call and radio over IP, and then specialized devices, uh, including presentation systems or translation systems, esports, sports and recreation, or military. Civic uh, Stream has um, hundreds of thousands of installs that are in service today. Uh, chances are you've been on a train or a bus or an elevator that, uh, that runs it. So now that I've given you a quick overview, I wanted to switch gears for a moment and touch on what it takes to uh, develop communication systems. What is important to understand about voice and video systems is there is a lot of disciplines that need to come together to make it successful. Uh, there is networking, signaling, DSP algorithms, real-time requirements, analog and digital subsystems, and then on top of that, there's considerable human factors. This makes designing communications devices quite a bit more complex than a typical uh, data control or IoT device. Now, I don't want to go <laughs> too far back to the beginning, but I think it's important to frame the design considerations in some of the development process. So the key first decision uh, is whether or not the system needs to be compatible with existing infrastructure. If the overall application can benefit from a highly developed communications ecosystems, then something like SIP is a really good choice. SIP also brings the assurance of a standardized control protocol and signaling with registration, authentication, location tracking, firewall traversal. These all sound like things you want, but it does come at the cost of complexity and ensuring interoperability. On the other hand, if the end-to-end -end system is going to be under your control, then the overhead of interoperability 
may not be necessary, and it may be better to focus on your own uh, specific application constraints. For example, if the application is lightweight, like a wearable, then proprietary signaling can focus on power management aspects. If the application requires one-to-many operation, then using multicast RTP may be a better choice. If more than one mode is required, such as VoIP, video, and multicast, then it'll be important to ensure that these multiple services can coexist and operate concurrently. Media selection is also very important, as this will affect uh, interoperability and also human factors. ITU codecs such as U711A law or U law are supported by all VoIP equipment, but use eight kilohertz sample rates. Generally, what we've seen as a bigger industry trend is to move away from the narrowband audio codecs to use wideband such as G722 uh, at 16 kilohertz sample rates to improve the overall audio intelligibility. That being said, there are some applications that use paper bit connections or satellite connections, and these may require even lower bit rate codecs, uh, such as ILBC or G729, and may add additional features on top of it, such as DTX, which is called discontinuous transmission, which is the ability to turn on and off the transmission based on silence to minimize uh, bandwidth and operating cost. CivicStream provides a complete portfolio of signaling and media options. The SIP stack uh, within CivicStream has been certified. It's field proven and the interoperability test it against all major uh, manufacturers and service providers. Uh, the CivicStream uh, Linux stack uh, can support concurrent operations for multiple communications modes at the same time. And CivicStream MCU uh, version or the RTOS version supports discrete firmware loads depending on the operational paradigm that, uh, that you need to use. So once you have your core signaling and media stack worked out, you can start uh, focusing on your audio design and implementation. There are two parts to audio design that will affect performance. Number one is the audio subsystem comprised of the digital software side. And number two is a hardware acoustic model, which is comprised of the physical design and the components like the speaker, the microphone, their placement, isolation. Both of these are equally as important. Uh, particularly when it comes to good quality full duplex operation for hands-free devices or intercom. Even a good audio subsystem on the digital side can't compensate for a bad acoustic model. So if you're developing an intercom or hands-free application, there's really no way of getting around this. Uh, to help with this though, uh, we have a mature feature-rich audio subsystem and uh, about 20 years of experience working with uh, leading audio components, including DSP systems and algorithms. We do have uh, best practice guidelines for developing hardware acoustic designs. We can consult in this process. We have significant tooling uh, and expertise uh, internally to help tune, tune for acoustic models. Once you have your uh, platform, you can uh, start to get on with the fun stuff, which is developing your core application. Uh, as with uh, any Edge application, there are some things you will need to provide as part of the core system. So these include things like configuration and management, uh, operational control, firmware update capability, uh, and probably some method of performance reporting back to a central monitoring application. You'll need to build your core applica application logic. This might uh, include additional authentication beyond signaling, uh, telemetry events, notifications, and control. And your application will need to consider its low-level uh, control uh, call control state machine. Uh, in addition, there will need to be some form of local actions, uh, you know, either as uh, I.O. To display, to, display, to display state information or an LCD display. Finally, it's key for mission-critical edge applications to provide a method to uh, harden the product. Uh, and these need to occur at uh, several levels from within the system. At the service level, it's important to, to uh, uh, handle a concurrent server operation that can provide redundancy or failover that can provide resiliency. At the media layer, uh, where calls uh, need to be monitored to provide packet performance, such as um, metrics such as jitter and loss. Uh, at, the acoustic at the acoustic layer, when we uh, need to do testing to detect the degraded performance of components or even potential vandalism that may have done something like damage a speaker or a microphone. And then at the network layer, where we have uh, tests and heuristics that can detect and uh, compensate for a loss of connectivity. What our tours can provide are all of the underpinning aspects of this core application. And on top of it, we can provide an API that can let you quickly write your own higher level code. So if you can imagine this uh, block diagram and we just, uh, we just insert a layer between core application 
and system runtime, you know, this is what it would sort of look like. What this does is it greatly simplifies the amount of uh, application work needed to be uh, done to bring a product uh, to market. So in summary, uh, building an application is always about focus. Uh, there are things you will need to do and there are things that you will want to do. Uh, what we try to do at Arcturus is provide all the things that you need to do to help you focus on the things that uh, you want to do. That is the things that uh, are specific to your application domain without having to worry about the underpinning signaling logic or management. So uh, how does this then translate uh, to what's under the hood inside Civic Stream? Well, Civic Stream is primarily a group of modular services for voice and video communications combined with encoding algorithms, audio intelligibility enhancements, security, and additional signaling extensions specifically designed to, to maintain communications at all costs. Uh, these services are modular and uh, we can address different types of devices with different performance requirements. So for example, if you require only a one channel audio device, uh, Civic Stream on a microcontroller running an RTOS will be sufficient. If your application is more demanding and requires voice, video, advanced features, security, then really a Linux uh, solution will be the right choice. The good thing is that uh, no matter uh, the underpinning architecture, there is consistency in the high level API across all platforms for call control and management. And what this means is that you can scale services from small microcontrollers and RTOSs all the way up to complex digital networking devices fairly seamlessly and allows you to reuse your application code. And uh, here we can see uh, perhaps a better example of what we mean by this. Uh, at the low end, uh, Civic Stream provides a simple method to play back local announcement files using about 20K of SRAM and a microcontroller. Uh, using a microcontroller, we can add unicast or multicast audio stream or streaming or even the full duplex void and 128K of SRAM. And then we sort of make this transition when we scale up to, to a Linux system, which offers all of these services concurrently adds VoIP security, and then we can scale these instances to become multi-channel or add video and vision functions at the, uh, at the high end. To help frame the scalability, we can take a look at some of the common use cases and applications. Audio file playback is critical for applications like passenger information systems to announce station stops or even for evacuation systems to announce instructions. Here it's very desirable to contain all notification messages uh, local uh, to the device. The advantage to this approach over live announcements is that audio intelligibility can be tightly controlled because it does not suffer from user vari variability. For applications that use audio file play, it's the key sort of uh, requirements for them are a simple integration, uh, an easy method to trigger message playback and easy audio file management. Uh, we also find this solution frequently needs to work alongside a live audio PA mode uh, or even VoIP as well. For, uni for uh, unicast audio streaming applications, including conference systems, wearable, elder care, or rescue systems, or sports recreations, or esports, uh, the end to end application tends to be more under the control of the developer. The focus is uh, less on global interoperability and more on high quality audio power management aspects and also the uh, size of the uh, integration of the device and the hardware. Civic Stream can provide uh, unicast audio streaming, either uh, full duplex or half duplex, including noise reduction, uh, which can be very useful for reducing the background noise on uh, applications such as uh, vehicles. For PA or public address applications, uh, such as live announcements at schools, campuses, or in industrial parks or warehouses, oil and gas and mining, uh, there is no sort of formal standard on how these systems should work. So Civic Stream offers a couple of solutions to this. The first is a very simple method, which is supported by PBX vendors and some standalone PC applications. Uh, it requires a receiver mode only as the PBX or the application is the transmitter in this case. So this makes it very suitable for schools, offices, warehouses, retail, any, uh, where you, anywhere you really want to integrate tightly with the phone system. But secondly, Civic Stream also supports a more sophisticated standalone system. And uh, this method has a control protocol built into it, which adds additional channel protection, security, and session control. 
It also makes it standalone and is dual function. So it has transmitter and receiver stacks uh, built, to, built in. Uh, this solution is geared more towards mission critical PA applications like evacuation systems and public safety. Uh, because it has the um, transmit and receive capability built into it, it's also suitable for group PTT or push to talk applications such as walkie talkie systems or uh, radio over IP. By far the biggest application of SIP Extreme is in two-way voice intercom systems. Uh, these systems range from patient care devices to building access control systems. A lot of these systems today are voice only, but with the proliferation of the video doorbell, camera integration is uh, quickly becoming a, a must have. These applications typically use SIP and integrate as part of an overall network, either locally on premises with a PBX or via a cloud service and public, uh, public switch telephone network or the PSTM. For simple push to call applications, SIP Extreme has facilities to run fully autonomously by assigning functions to IO. So you don't need a controlling application necessarily, you need a no code type solution. For more sophisticated applications, such as access control systems, you may want to add your own custom control application inside the firmware, or if you have another solution where you need tight supervision. Regardless uh, of how simple or complex the device is, the key to VoIP and intercoms is that it needs to remain interoperable with upstream equipment and, uh, and offer uh, audio intelligibility enhancements that are required by hands-free devices. And the most important of this is going to be acoustic echo cancellation. Uh, second to that is probably background noise reduction, which I, I covered off already. So it's three minutes, voice, uh, and it's a voice over IP service is a constantly interrupt tested. It's compatible with a large number of equipment vendors. Um, from this standpoint, uh, you don't need to be messing around with uh, signal incompatibility, SIP call flows, uh, and developing call control. It's all abstracted for you. And the simple light approach allows you to focus on your core application instead of worrying about interrupting call flows. We try to take care of that for you. Uh, SIP Extreme also offers a considerable number of extensions, including security, self test, resilient fun resilience functions, and I'll go into these in a bit more in just a minute. In just a minute. Uh, last but not least is video support, uh, which has an application in access control, security, presentation, and conference systems, um, the, uh, as, as well as cameras. The focus of video support in Civic Street is camera integration, either using MIPI or USB cameras. Uh, just a quick rundown of that support. Uh, USB tends to be a complete uh, system, including optics, uh, camera sensor, ISP, and some processing to support the USB interface. In some cases, these cameras also include encoding, which can offload this uh, from the CPU, from the host CPU, reducing the requirements on the host CPU significantly. This is kind of an important data point because uh, this means that you can provide voice and video support using devices at a much lower power. Uh, USB cameras also provide longer cable lengths, uh, which can provide more options for the camera front end placement. Um, on the other hand, MIPI cameras offer much better system, overall system integration, much better camera control and more options. In terms of video, uh, Civic Stream supports uh, an MJPEG service for streaming via H.264, H.265. Uh, it supports uh, extensions to SIP to uh, act like a standard video phone. And it can also support integration uh, with WebRTC, which is very uh, useful for web-based workflow, workflow and operational uh, technology uh, integration. Uh, WebRTC compatibility is pretty much standard in most uh, browsers today. I've given you a quick overview of SIP Extremes and applications and use cases. So let's talk a bit more about how hardware platforms uh, fit into this overall picture. So SIP Extreme's hardware lineup supports a broad range of applications. At the low end on the far left of this slide is our microcontroller-based platform called the UCMK64VOIP. It uses an RTOS that's achieved medical grade certification and it delivers a very hard and de dependable experience with a very fast boot time. It's the easiest uh, to use platform we have, but it's still very big in capabilities. Uh, it supports one analog line and has discrete firmware for VOIP and PA. It's ready to go out of the box. It's compatible with our system manager tool that lets you set it up, configure it, update firmware, even remotely manage it. Uh, next to that is our UCBF54X platform, which is one of our Linux platforms. And it's built using a Blackfin DSP device from our partner at Analog Devices. 
This platform can support up to six uh, analog lines. Uh, then we have two additional Linux platforms available, one called the, US, the UCLS 1012A and one called the UCIMX 8M. These platforms uh, scale all the way up into uh, video and vision integration. The UCLS 1012A VOIP, I'll talk a little bit more about in, in a minute. It's uh, one of our low power Linux systems. And then the UC IDMX 8M uh, has a, is a mezzanine module, which has a lot of features that are geared towards in-vehicle intelligent transportation and fleet telemetry and communication systems. Uh, this is a quick summary table that illustrates the communications features of each platform, including the number of analog audio channels, uh, the audio intelligibility enhancements that are available, including uh, a few stick echo cancellation, AEC, and uh, noise reduction, standard and optional codecs, security and hardening extensions, and also camera input and display output modes. Also listed on this slide, which is not actually included in the previous slide, is the UCP 1020. Uh, the UCP 1020 is a little bit unique because it's a fully digital platform using a digital networking a CPU with ECC capability. And now what we've done with that is we've put it over asterisks uh, with the free PBX UI to this platform. This makes it uh, suitable if you need a very comprehensive hardened communication server or PBX platform. So it's very good for that, uh, for that use. I mentioned that I would talk a bit more about the UCLS 1012A VOIP module. This is the newest member of our SIP Extreme hardware family. Uh, it's a compact uh, business card size module. It uses a 314 pin smart form factor. And it's really intended to uh, intended for a broad range of uh, mission critical communications uh, applications, uh, things like intercoms or access control systems. Uh, what makes it really unique in our product line is that it's a 64-bit Linux system with a broad range of connectivity peripherals, including an optional 802.15.4 radio, which means that it can connect to things like uh, wearables or even smartphones for, uh, for onboarding it. Now with the UC LS1012A, uh, the module uses the LS1012 1012A CPU from NXP. This is a single core ARM Cortex A53 running at 800 megahertz. It's part of uh, NXP's digital networking processor lineup. Now there are various memory configura uh, configurations available on this platform, uh, including 512 megabytes of RAM and 64 megabytes of QSpine NOR flash. There's also options for uh, EMMC mass storage as well. There are two dedicated network interfaces, uh, USB 3 and PCIe and SATA. There are also standard serial interfaces, including UARTs, SPI, I2C, and SAI, which is uh, I2S compatible, which is used for, uh, typically used for uh, audio connections. Because the uh, system uh, uses a low power CPU, uh, we've added an, a couple of IO expanders that provide up to 16 3.3 volt tolerant to input and outputs. So this is really great if you need to connect to external uh, equipment or if you want to use it as a really simple uh, push to call style uh, device and have a simple push to call style interface. IO definitions are configurable and uh, we can provide a reference application that implements uh, a common uh, IO uh, controls, and uh, we can provide that uh, uh, to you if you want to modify that as well. Uh, this uh, next slide is a quick breakdown of the UCLS 1012A uh, UIP module hardware. Uh, the module includes the CPU, memory, reset, power management, uh, Ethernet files, USB V bus controller, and also two of the 3.3 volt uh, IO. Uh, expanders that I mentioned before. Thermal management, the audio subsystem component with internal DSP capability and the analog front end. And I mentioned there's some optional components that are available too, which is the uh, 802.15.4 uh, controller and uh, optional EMMC. Uh, the module is uh, 50 by 82 millimeters. It's got four mounting holes uh, to help fasten it in place. And really what we've tried to do here is include everything we could on the module to try to reduce the complexity of external integration and make that as simple as possible. So uh, how would you sort of uh, use this in an overall system? Well, here's a uh, kind of a quick example of, of what you can do. And uh, what we're trying to 
illustrate here is how you can use the combination of analog audio, IO signals, Ethernet to build a fairly standard wire device or extend this using mini PCIe or USB 3 to support additional communications interfaces such as Wi-Fi, LTE, or even add um, a, a camera or a mass storage onto it. Uh, since the system is ARCH64 based, there is excellent support for peripherals and connectivity. It also means that it supports Docker, and this uh, gives you some really new and exciting ways to, to build uh, applications and control applications uh, and, and deploy them and manage many of them at the same time if you want to do that as well. Uh, this is a really high level wiring diagram uh, that uh, illustrates the signals that are available to you on the bus. There are a number of multiplexed uh, primary alternate signals on the LS1012 ACPU itself. Uh, this uh, slide actually is, is also handy because it has the ITUSC address information for the peripheral components that are actually used on the module, which is uh, always really useful if you need, if you need to connect to uh, any additional ITC parts. Um, you'll also notice that the uh, PMIC supports a uh, lithium battery backup, uh, and this is pretty useful for mission critical applications. Uh, this slide's, uh, I guess, a little bit tricky to go into in any real detail on a webinar, but suffice it to say, uh, we will post this uh, and post the webinar afterwards. And if you have any specific questions, you can, of course, uh, feel free to uh, reach out uh, to me. In terms of audio support, uh, the audio subsystem can support up to two channels of voice using four different supported modes. Uh, mode number one is a one line VoIP intercom mode that is full duplex with DSP support for acoustic echo cancellation and noise reduction. Uh, the second mode is the same one line VoIP intercom mode, but also includes additional support for one uh, additional audio output. This means that it can, uh, this additional output can be used to offer a fully concurrent PA and uh, VOIP intercom mode or playback recorded announcements or have external ringer controls. So it's a pretty useful uh, feature. The third mode offers two outputs and this can be used for things like um, dual uh, PA functions. Uh, and fourth mode offers two full duplex VoIP lines uh, with inputs and outputs but does not provide the added DSP functions for AEC and noise reduction. And this mode is very suitable for any uh, backhaul, uh, backhaul applications such as uh, um, radio or over IP or specialized uh, handsets that don't require uh, the acoustic echo cancellation. Uh, finally, in hardware, I mentioned uh, before that uh, the IO is user configurable and that we provide an example. It supports basic uh, push push to call functions and uh, call control and audio functions. There are 16 inputs and outputs in total. Uh, the development kit host board does provide a provision to connect the inputs to switches and outputs to LEDs. And these are the default uh, functions that are defined in the example application that we can provide. Uh, so this gives you a pretty typical uh, IO control interface. So we've got push to call inputs and answer call inputs, volume ad adjustments, uh, status outputs, including uh, registered, ready, network ready, and alarm functions, uh, a supervised output, which indicates that the device is actually connected to a host system. And then we've got a couple of spare inputs and outputs that you can use for your own uh, purposes. There's also a set of additional eight inputs and outputs. And we consider these to be extended signals. And so these give you slightly more specialized functionality including call controls for the second line, if you're going to use that, uh, latching hook switch and PTT inputs, uh, integration signals to, uh, to support external amp equipment, so the signal external amp equipment, and additional audio controls, such as a dedicated mic, uh, mic mute inputs. So bear in mind, while we refer to these uh, signals as dedicated, uh, these functions, as I said before, are under software control, and you can give you an application that creates this functionality as a reference if you want to modify it in any way. Uh, so creating uh, voice devices is fairly easy to create voice devices using the UC LS1012A. Uh, building the audio front end is a bit more specific to the type of application you're developing, uh, but the analog audio inputs and outputs are already there and the development kit provides you a reference schematic to help implement the right signal levels. 
Uh, to set up and configure the device, there are a few options. You can use a PC on the same local LAN and connect via a web interface. You can configure the device to retrieve a configuration file from a remote location. You can use our Embark system manager tool, which really quickly allows you to set up and manage many devices on the network. And uh, we provide a free copy of system manager with the dev kit. You can also use it for remote management if you're using gateways. It's also important to note that the uh, UCLS 1012A uh, has two physical ethernets and this gives you some additional options. Uh, this means that the device can sit as an endpoint inside a network or it can reside at the edge of the network and act as a gateway, either providing edge access to devices that are behind it or connecting uh, externally for remote management purposes or perhaps to connect to an upstream service provider. In this uh, slide, we're giving you an example of how you can add uh, camera support. In this case, we're adding camera support and potentially mass storage support as well. So typically with the UCLS 1012A, we would use a, uh, we, add, we would add the camera support by adding a, a UVC compatible USB camera module. And there's a lot of those to choose from with various lens and other options. This, is, this approach typically uh, minimizes the amount of video encoding the CPU needs to do and uh, allows us to stick with using a very low power device. Now there's lots of options for, for video output uh, on the digital side, uh, including SIP. So that would make the device behave very similar to uh, a VoIP video phone, or we can provide a standalone uh, service such as an MJPEG uh, camera streamer uh, or web RTC streamer as well. And then finally, uh, with the UCLS 1012A, uh, we can talk a bit about adding uh, vision applications and scaling up the vision applications as well. Bear in mind the uh, LS 1012A CPU is a single core a uh, ARM A53 core. So you might think it's uh, too low power to add vision into it, but we have, uh, we have used our brain to edge vision and analytics software on this processor. And it can handle um, some basic vision functions. So it can handle things like uh, facial recognition, uh, basic object detection, particularly for applications that don't require a uh, high frame rate. Uh, now we can also, because of the peripheral set, add a coprocessor to it or even an external uh, MDU. So that should give you a, a good overview of hardware and, uh, and also the UC LS 1012A VoIP platform and some, give you some good ideas of what can be done with that. Um, why don't we jump into software specifications? The next few slides provide an overview of SIP Extreme software features for microcontrollers and Linux. Our, st our stack's uh, capabilities are a little different between these two classes of products since there's quite a bit of a difference between a microcontroller running an RTOS and a multi-core Linux applications processor. In terms of uh, SIP signaling, all basic VoIP functionality is supported by both MCU, RTOS, and Linux platforms. The key difference between our Linux and RTOS stacks is that with Linux, we generally have a lot more memory and resources. And this allows us to run services concurrently or to support multiple channels. With RTOS systems, we're generally, generally confined by the onboard flash and RAM. Uh, there are also some additional calling features in the Linux implementation, including uh, call waiting support, call transfer initiation, call return, call back and busy, uh, rules that you can set up for incoming or outgoing calls. Um, these provide a, a bit more typical telephony handset or ATA-like functionality, whereas the RTOS uh, systems are generally, generally much more utilitarian and simplified. Uh, in terms of signaling features, the, uh, the Linux stack includes more DTMF methods, including SIP info, uh, additional SIP extensions, and an added uh, protocol layer for interaction with external Sun or uh, Stun or Turn servers. Um, our Linux devices also have a basic interactive voice response system where they can read back configuration and caller information by saying an IP address or phone number. Uh, these are all very nice to have features, but uh, typically not a limitation for um, most SIP applications. Um, with uh, VoIP security, our Linux stack supports uh, SIP TLS and SRTP, including the uh, SIP extensions referred to as SIP S, uh, which is a set of extensions that um, secure a call end to end and not just between the endpoint and the server. Our Linux stacks also support uh, video, as mentioned before. Uh, RTOS and Linux stacks 
both support narrow and wideband audio encoding with options for specialized codecs, uh, such as low bit rate codecs, uh, ILBC, GC29. Both platforms also support AEC and noise reduction functions. Uh, our Linux platforms have some optional specialized algorithms that we can uh, make available for doing things like audio level detection and active talker enhancements. Um, the multi-channel Linux systems also can make use of a mixer fabric that we can provide, which creates um, an environment where you can handle uh, multi-in and multi-out mixes and muxes, which is really, uh, really great for comms applications. Um, in terms of hardening, both our RTOS and Linux platforms has, have uh, connectivity tests, network fallback options, as well as work failover and protection timers. Linux can also support server redundancy and offers additional heuristics for analog audio self-tests and actions based on RTCP call quality reporting. The analog self-test functions are pretty useful uh, for things like uh, intercoms, particularly if they're uh, in a public space because you can detect if uh, a microphone has been damaged or a speaker has been damaged perhaps uh, through vandalism. Uh, both the RTOX and uh, Linux stacks uh, include hardware watchdog support in addition to application layer protection. So even if an event unrelated to the runtime uh, causes an issue, the system will uh, restart. Finally, for multicast PA and PTT and audio file play, features look quite similar across uh, both RTOS and Linux platforms. Uh, again, we offer two implementations for multicast PA. One is a simple protocol list solution that's compatible with PBXs and standalone PC application transmitters uh, you know, for school systems like uh, Bell Commander. From a device standpoint, uh, the stack is receiver only uh, since the PBX or the PC application will be the transmitter. The second application uh, that we can provide is uh, makes use of a control protocol, uh, and this adds a certain layer, a certain level of protection and some additional features. This solution is uh, really geared at uh, standalone PA systems uh, because devices can be uh, and devices can be both transmitters and receivers. The system can arbitrate talkers to support multiple trans uh, transmitters, and this makes it um, suitable not only for PA applications but also for push to talk group communications such as walkie-talkie devices, uh, belt pack comms systems, those sorts of uh, applications. Uh, for audio file play, there's probably not a lot to, <laughs> a lot to talk about. Uh, audio files, uh, audio playback can be triggered based on uh, telephony call progress events, or it can be fully independent and triggered externally through a host protocol. Uh, files are encoded using uh, 16 kilohertz sample rates uh, to ensure good quality uh, audio playback. Uh, now, one of the questions we get asked all the time is how to connect, configure, and manage these devices. And fortunately, we do have a pretty mature solution baked into our SIP Extreme devices, and this uses our Embark's uh, secure IoT stack. If you're buying hardware from us, uh, we include the Embark secure IoT stack as part of the overall product. Embark supports secure device management, uh, over-the-air firmware updates, and telemetry. This diagram illustrates how this works using a Linux system. Um, just to run through this quickly, from the back end, it uses a database system of MIB objects, so management information base objects, and these are tied into a configuration engine. Uh, the MIB objects control various parameters within the Linux services. When a parameter is changed, the configuration engine then applies the change to the running system. If you're looking at, at it from the front end, we expose these parameters in several ways, uh, either using a lightweight host protocol for application or system integration, uh, a web UI for user configuration. There's a call home service that can connect to a, a cloud system or a, some machine-based controller configuration option. Uh, in Linux, there's also optional SNMP methods to handle at scale management. And uh, there's also uh, an interface uh, into a management tool that we provide called Embark System Manager. Uh, now, the cool part about uh, Embark Secure IoT is that it is available for RTOS and Linux devices. So from an integration perspective, uh, it's all one kind of seamless ecosystem. Uh, the only real difference, as I've said before, is that uh, in Linux, we have more features and services, uh, and we also provide a web UI. With RTOS solutions, we save the uh, flash and uh, SRAM space and forego the web UI, and then we push the uh, user configuration and the workflow and UI and UX 
uh, into uh, MBART's uh, system manager. Um, so here's a quick comparison uh, so you can get a good feel for setup and configuration using system manager or web UI. Uh, on the left side of the screen is system manager configuration. It's simple click through workflow. System manager automatically detects devices on the network and you just double click on the device you want to configure. Uh, and uh, this will bring up a uh, configuration page. Uh, and then you can uh, make any changes you need. So device name and settings, networking connectivity. Uh, this particular device is a UCMK64 VoIP microcontroller device running the RTOS stack of Pacific Stream. So we can set up the uh, VoIP account information. Uh, we can configure any push to call controls or set up the server. We can uh, also change any audio settings as well. So here's a codec selection. Uh, any control or remote management that you need to uh, set up for that as well. So it's a pretty simple, uh, pretty simple clean interface. Uh, and System Manager allows you to access one or many devices on your local network, or uh, you can uh, connect to remote devices by adding a gateway into your system and then connecting System Manager to that gateway. Uh, on the right side, we have a secure web UI from within a Linux device displaying very much the same type of setup that I just illustrated using System Manager. Uh, the only difference is this is being served natively from uh, the device using uh, web UI. Now, from the perspective of functionality, uh, there's a lot of crossover between our RTOS and Linux stacks. That's very intentional. Both support TLS, both support configuration, telemetry, and operation secure OTA firmware updates, call home and remote management. Uh, as with SIPExtreme, really the core difference is that there's more features and services available in Linux than in an RTOS system. Um, and in this case, uh, a couple of good examples here are things like uh, you know, SSH. Uh, generally, it would be undesirable to have SSH in an MCU or likely a shell of any sort. Uh, Linux also supports um, additional servers, such as DHCP server and NTP server. We've got this standard Linux firewall. All these can be configured via MBARTS. From the perspective of hardening, uh, we've already talked about uh, connectivity monitoring, network uh, fallback operation, and watchdog support. Uh, what we haven't covered is uh, firmware updates and security. And uh, MBARTS has a secure update mechanism, uh, firmware update mechanism built into it. It not only delivers uh, firmware over a TLS authenticated encrypted connection, but it also encapsulates the firmware payload and signs the payload to verify the integrity, uh, authenticity, and even the compatibility. So this ensures that firmware is from a trusted source, that the firmware payload is being delivered to a compatible device type, and firmware can be pushed using uh, Embark System Manager or devices can call home periodically uh, to check for updates. If you're using a, a gateway in the uh, Embarks ecosystem, uh, gateways have a firmware repo uh, built into them. Uh, and this allows uh, devices just to connect to the, to the gateway and uh, get their firmware update. They don't need to uh, egress their uh, local land. Um, in terms of firmware failover, uh, with the MCU devices, we support uh, fully redundant firmware images. Uh, with Linux, this can be a bit prohibitive because of the size. Uh, instead, we support a rescue image method that can springboard a fully working image. Uh, with Linux, we can also add further security enhancements, such as secure boot and uh, an encrypted uh, file system support as well. You know, again, this slide gets a little bit complicated, so uh, you know, we can always review this uh, after we post this uh, webinar. Okay, we had a quick look at uh, System Manager. Um, the Virtual Control Panel is another tool in the Embarks product line. Uh, it's geared at developers to help them learn and experiment with the Embarks host protocol, which is called ASD. The host protocol is really the backbone of Embarks, and it's available on a secure TCP IP socket or a UART, uh, UART connection. Uh, with Linux, you can recall that this, this can also be a local interface, which means that you can have your application completely internal. Uh, ASD is a simple character-driven request response protocol that includes device settings, telemetry, IO controls, and uh, SIP, SIP Extreme operation as well. Um, you can see in this example workflow using the virtual control panel tool here, this device is using a uh, SIP Extreme VoIP and you can see its state, that it's uh, registered, that the network is ready, uh, it has an application connected uh, to it and we call it supervised mode. 
Uh, you can see all the IO red states. Um, in this particular example, uh, a call was just placed using the CS call start command. This is uh, actually my cell phone that it was calling. Uh, and you can see a number of uh, NC call notifications as the call progresses from ringing to media, connected, and then finally hung up to end the, end the call. Uh, so there you go. And now, now at least you have my cell phone number <laughs> if you need it uh, as well. Uh, this is just a bit more granular example of the same ASD workflow as demonstrating the queries and responses. You can see the ASD notifications for IO events as the device changes its external signals to do things like turn on uh, call progress LEDs and the external uh, AMP enable signals. Um, so really the virtual control panel is a, a great tool to help jumpstart uh, integration and that's uh, really what it's in, intended to do. Um, I guess uh, I, I want to touch on the fact that Embarks is uh, an ecosystem of endpoint tools and gateways. Uh, I've covered the endpoints and tools. It merits touching on gateways, in particular uh, two gateways, which one is called the site controller and the other is called the operations controller. A site controller is a gateway that is used for the management of remote sites. Uh, it resides on premises. It can provide edge services to connect to the outside world if it's using a dual Ethernet max, or it can sit inside the remote network and call home. It's very simple to use. It works seamlessly with System Manager. All you do is select the site controller you want to connect to, then System Manager presents you the remote site and all of its devices just the way uh, you would see it as if they were those devices were on your local LAN. And then you have full capability to manage all of the devices at the, at the remote site using the secure connection. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, that uh, when you connect to uh, a site, you get access to a uh, site controller, you get access to its firmware repository. If you upload new firmware using System Manager to the gateway, then the gateway will serve that firmware and, and it can update all of the devices at that location. This is a much, um, much more streamlined and much more efficient pro uh, process than having each device sort of call home across a public network to some central cloud server or anything else. And last but not least is the operations controller. Uh, this is a gateway stack for interactive workflow and uh, operational uh, technology. In this uh, example, we are illustrating how you can use this uh, to create a fairly sophisticated multi-tenant access control system. Here we have a web interface, uh, which a visitor can walk up to the device, they interact with the uh, web interface, and they can select the tenant uh, they want to reach. And what will happen then is the system will send a text message with a link to the tenant. The link then enables the tenant to securely see the, the uh, door video camera, uh, control the uh, access control, uh, door lock settings, or set up an audio channel. And uh, similar workflow can be used for a ton of different applications, uh, including things like uh, nurse call systems or, or elder care, where additional sensors or wearables can be integrated and it can trigger events that can then uh, notify a central station or, uh, or, a, uh, or a care station. So hopefully I've given you a good introduction to our SIP Extreme product line. And uh, as an added bonus, I've given you a quick overview of Embark Secure IoT as well. The easiest way to get started is to get a development kit. Uh, they are low cost. Uh, there are low cost development kits available starting at 495. They really do give you everything you need to begin evaluation and development. Uh, we also do offer solutions engagements. Uh, if you do need something more specialized, uh, typically solutions engagements start around $7,500. But this should give you a really good range of options and engagements, uh, and uh, they can really fit uh, any project or budget. Here are some additional resources you can rely on. Uh, we do have a really good white paper on how to develop VoIP devices, including some of the common pitfalls that developers encounter. We uh, also have lots of demo videos. Uh, there's a link here to the UCMP64 uh, VOIP setup and demo. I'd encourage you to check that out if you're in the market for a simple VoIP or hardened audio product. And of course, uh, feel free to reach out to me uh, if you have uh, any questions. I'm happy to, to, uh, to answer those. Uh, and my email is here as well as my number, so you can use those to reach out. So I think that uh, brings us to the uh, Q&A portion of the webinar today. Uh, I saw that there were a few questions that came in along the way. Um, I'll just uh, get to those in, in a moment. Uh, for those of you who will uh, drop off at this point, uh, thank you very much for uh, joining me today, and uh, we will post this 
uh, and you can review it later if there's any uh, anything anything you missed.